quit focusing on the disease, start focusing on, I want to create health for my cells. And if I'm going to create health for my cells, that means I need to reduce the oxidative stress, help my mitochondria work well, be sure my cells are flooded with nutrition. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 124 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today's episode is all about scleroderma, which is a topic we haven't covered before, in addition to how you could use a very specific dietary protocol to potentially help if you've got autoimmune issues and even autoimmune skin conditions like psoriasis. To be honest with you, today's guest is a good friend and colleague of mine, and I feel very honored to have her on the show. This is her first time. So for those of you who know Dr. Terry Walls, you probably already are aware of how many amazing things that she has done in her career and continues to do in fighting for those with neurodegenerative diseases like MS and ALS. The reason that I asked Dr. Walls to be on the show is because her protocol has actually helped people with autoimmune skin conditions. So we're going to talk today about what has changed in her approach to the Walls protocol and all of the different facets to the dietary changes and whatnot that may be helpful for you. So even if you don't follow it 100%, you might be able to take a few pearls and integrate them into your own diet, no matter what sort of chronic skin rash condition you have. Without further ado, let's dive into today's conversation with Dr. Terry Walls. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am incredibly honored today to have a colleague as well as someone who I consider a good friend join me for the first time ever here at the Healthy Skin Show. And it's a big deal because the work that she is doing is literally changing lives. It is mind blowing every single time I talk to her and hear about all the amazing thing that, things that she is up to researching. Like she actually does research which is huge. Um, and so you guys might know who she is. If you don't, you, you, this is your crash course and introduction into the work of Dr. Terry Walls. Dr. Walls is a clinical professor at the University of Iowa where she conducts clinical trial testing the efficacy of therapeutic lifestyle to treat multiple sclerosis-related symptoms. In addition, she's the author of The Walls Protocol, How I Beat Progressive MS Using Paleo Principles and Functional Medicine, and the cookbook, The Walls Protocol Cooking for Life, the revolutionary modern paleo plan to treat all chronic autoimmune conditions. And she's got a new edition of her book coming out. We'll talk about that. Dr. Walls, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I love chatting with you. <laughs> I know. Every time I see you, you're up to these amazing things. So for anyone who's not familiar with your work, you actually started out working on your own health. Like this journey oh, began yeah. with you. Could you give us a brief synopsis of how you got into this? Sure. So I'm a conventional internal medicine doc uh, and was very skeptical of special diets, supplements, all that jazz. Uh, but God has a mysterious way about him or herself. Uh, I uh, started having problems with uh, the my left leg, uh, got evaluated, it was found to have multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Now I sought out the best people I could find in the country I uh, took the newest drugs and went steadily, relentlessly downhill. Within three years, I needed to recline wheelchair. Uh, I take uh, more potent drugs, including the new biologic drugs. I continue to go relentlessly downhill. Uh, you know, and that's why I decided, like, you know, conventional medicine clearly is not going to stop my slide into a bedridden, demented, and quite possibly intractable pain due to trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, so I, I'm studying uh, the basic science, I'm reading ancestral health principles, I uh, discover functional medicine, read through that, and I begin experimenting basing on everything that I've learned. And ultimately, I create a, a diet and lifestyle program designed for my mitochondria and my brain cells uh, in an effort to slow my decline, because I know with progressive MS, you, uh, recovery of function is not possible. To my surprise, actually, I was quite stunned 
I'm up walking again. I'm walking with a cane, then without a cane. I get on my bike for the first time uh, in about six years. Uh, and then uh, within a year of making these changes, I'm able to do an 18.5 mile bike ride with my family. I'm off all disease modifying drugs. Uh, my uh, medications, a uh, trivial dose of um, uh, gabapentin uh, for the intractable pain that uh, I used to struggle with for years and years. Uh, and so this radically changes how I think about disease and health. Mm -hmm. It radically changes the way I practice medicine. Uh, and along the way, my uh, chair of medicine uh, tells me to get a case report written up, which I do. And then he calls me back and says, I want you to change the direction of your research. Um, and by then, he'd become the dean of medicine. And so when the dean of medicine calls you in to give you marching orders, you salute and say, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, and he, he got me some um, key mentors, and we launched trials. Um, we've done four trials, all of them very successful, and we're getting ready to launch our fifth trial. So it's it's been uh, just a, an amazing journey, uh, really, over the last uh, 12 years. Yeah, and watching your story when we first met, I feel like at least five years ago, yes. uh, seeing your before and after photos and watching your progress and then what you've been able to do with, you were working with veterans at the VA. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. not like yeah. this is uh, an expensive protocol loaded with like the most expensive supplements and injectables and all sorts of crazy stuff that is cost prohibitive to the regular person. Correct. You know, and uh, the VA noticed what I, the sex I had in clinic, invited me to create my own clinic, which we did. Uh, we called it the Therapeutic Lifestyle Clinic. Uh, and I did uh, the evaluations using VA labs, so basic primary care labs. Uh, and I was taking care of people living on food stamps, disabled, usually not working, and helping them get their food from small rural town uh, grocery stores. So using easily accessible foods, uh, accessible labs, uh, and very, very basic supplements, if supplements were added. Um, so when people say like the Walls Protocol or functional medicine is only for the wealthy, I have to say, well, I have, you know, eight years of experience doing this for people who are living on food stamps. Yeah. Uh, and we had tremendous success. Yeah, and, and I know for somebody listening to this, they're going, wait, we're talking, are we talking about MS? But the thing is that I've discovered from talking to you is that the WALS protocol is no longer just for MS. It sounds like Correct. you've had success in other areas with other conditions. Would you care sharing sure. a little bit about what those conditions are from the off the top of your head? Yeah, so the first two clinics I worked this in was the traumatic brain injury clinic, uh, so a lot of concussion, mental health issues, anxiety, uh, depression, PTSD. And then in my primary care clinic, so high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, uh, and a lot of autoimmune issues, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, uh, systemic lupus, fibromyalgia. Uh, and then um, when we established the therapeutic lifestyle clinic, then I went to the pain clinic and to primary care and said, give me your most difficult patients who are not responding to your treatments, I will take care of them, but they need to know no drugs are coming from me. Oh. We'll just be using diet and lifestyle. And so if they're open to working on diet and lifestyle, send them my way. Uh, and so uh, we saw, again, a wide variety of people. Pain was often the, the leading problem. Um, and we had tremendous success. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in that, uh, we, we saw a lot of folks with psoriasis, interestingly enough, and we were able to stabilize and regress their disease. Uh, so people came to us with a variety of skin components to their illness mm -hmm. that often typically uh, would resolve. You know, their uh, pain would diminish, their brain fog would diminish, their energy would improve, um, their need for pain meds would reduce, their need for the prescription medicines in general would reduce. Uh, the one thing that would uh, tend to improve, the other thing that would improve uh, a lot of sexual dysfunction uh, uh, for the ladies, severe periods, uh, menstrual regularity, infertility, um, and decreased libido. So uh, that would improve for the men. Uh, and they, again, these are young guys in their 20s, erectile dysfunction, loss of libido. Uh, and so, you know, they'd come back uh, very excited about uh, the improvement in mood, 
and the improvement uh, in their love life, their sex life, and their ability to get along much more effectively with their partners. Yeah. And, and so to, to kind of circle toward the skin component of this, do you have any suspicions or thoughts on why for people who have some of these chronic, probably more on the autoimmune side of things, skin issues, why the WALS protocol might be helpful? Sure. So um, there are many, many skin conditions that have an autoimmune component. Uh, and so decreasing that excessive abnormal immune response, both the innate immune response and the adaptive or antibody immune response, very, very helpful. Uh, and so it, it's not surprising then that those conditions greatly uh, calm down, reduce uh, as people implement the protocol. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, people can get a, a little bit of improvement if they just sort of implement the protocol. Uh, we have to go through that. If you really want to know, can the WALS protocol help you? You have to do the experiment correctly and actually do the whole protocol 100% for 100 days. And then you can evaluate okay, it helped or it didn't help. If you do it just sort of like 70%, 90%, um, you're reducing your risk for heart disease, reducing your risk for cancer, but you aren't going to really answer the question, can I turn off my autoimmune component of my skin disease? Mm. Well, and, and I think you bring up a good point too about making sure to, and this is important, I talk a lot about this on the Healthy Skin Show, that we do have to manage our expectations of what's possible with alternative options and even medications to some degree. So in the case of something like, let's talk a moment about scleroderma, scleroderma sure. where it, someone's disease process progresses toward severe fibrosis in different tissues. If they were yeah. to do this, like what, what is your thoughts on it? Cause I know people would be like, I would love to reverse it, but. So yeah, again, it depends on our disease state. Uh, a lot of diseases once entrenched, are going down so rapidly that we cannot uh, get the person back to a a fully healthy disease state. Uh, One of the things we can do is slow down the rate of progression. So for example, I have folks with Huntington's disease who implement my protocol and they slow down the progress. People with ALS slow down the progress. Um, Very, very uh, glad for that. And then I have people, uh, say with scleroderma, we can slow down the process. Sometimes we can stabilize the progress. And and then I've had some folks tell me that, in fact, they discover that they're having um, a regression of symptoms and they're certainly doing better. They are not yet healthy, young, uh, and have a fully uh, uh, supple skin again. But the fact that they've either greatly slow down the speed of their decline, stabilize their disease, or beginning for the first time to see even the tiniest shred of improvement is a dramatic, dramatic change and improvement from what conventional therapies have to offer. Mm, exactly. And that's a very good point. Um, and I know too, like, you know, people say, well, is there any way that I should be, if I don't have MS, like if I have scleroderma or if I have psoriasis, like do you, it sounds like you don't, but are there any tailored tweaks that they should make to the diet? Sure. Um, So depending on the disease state, I will make tailored tweaks. I may make the uh, uh, disease, the diet more of a low lectin diet. Mm -hmm. So it's the same walls protocol diet, but now I also take out nightshades. Uh, And if they're having legumes or grains, I put them through a pressure cooker uh, to reduce the lectins. And if they're having nuts and seeds, I sprout them, again, to reduce the lectins. So that makes the diet as uh, minimally inflammatory as I can. Mm. Uh, And so, in general, I don't start people on a low lectin diet, uh, but it, it depends on the severity of their illness. I may start them on that low lectin diet if they're willing. It's it's always a negotiation between how much change are you willing to do at 100% than the severity of your disease. Because whatever uh, dietary change you're going to agree to, I want you to do it 100%. Mm. So we can know, is this dietary change sufficient or do I have to up the game in some way? Mm. That's really interesting. And and so as far as 
like fibrosis is concerned, is there anything that you're familiar with as far that could like help as far as vitamins or food or nutrients in general? Or is that something that it's more where you are in the disease process? Well, mostly it's where you are in the disease process. There are some things that I would certainly want to think about. Uh, adequate vitamin C, uh, adequate amounts of magnesium. Um, I, I think uh, those two things. I, I know uh, cat's claw is uh, sometimes uh, recommended uh, as an additional supplement. Uh, sufficient vitamin E might be recommended. You know, my caution uh, for folks is nearly every supplement study fails in science. Our nutrition is a very complex interaction, a synergy between all of the components. So you really want to have a maximally nutrient-dense diet, and some uh, targeted supplements may be useful. I think it may be a circumstance where if you have the economic resources to get a thorough nutritional eval, such as a Genova Diagnostic Nutri eval, to identify do you have any insufficiencies based on your genetics and what you're eating that have to be addressed. Mm. That could be definitely very worthwhile um, because if you have insufficiencies, we absolutely want to get those taken care of for you. And I want to talk a moment about nu- your definition of nutrient dense as far as the WALS protocol is concerned. Because if somebody's not entirely familiar with what just the general diet looks like, yeah. what would they anticipate? Because you've got a new new book, a revised version yeah. coming out. So how does the, is there any changes to the, the protocol? What, what are the differences now? So the low lectin version, the walls elimination diet is much more clearly spelled out and who would benefit from doing the walls elimination diet. So we put that in there. I put a lot more information about the benefits of fasting uh, in terms of longevity and how that can reset your stem cells, which by the way, actually, as I think about it, it would probably be very worthwhile for scleroderma because we're trying to get stem cells for the reparative capacity. So exploring the discussion that I have on fasting in the book would be quite worthwhile. Another thing I spent a lot more time on has to do with uh, how we do behavior change. Because when we're doing diet and lifestyle change, our brain is to wired to do the stuff that rewards us immediately and avoid things that are uncomfortable. And over thousands and millions of generations, that people who did that had greater reproductive success, which is why it is so hard to do things for future benefit mm. and to forego pleasure today for future benefit, which means it is phenomenally difficult for all of us to change our behaviors, to give up sugar, to give up white flour, to give up all those yummy foods that are terrible for us, give up the processed foods that are really terrible for us. Uh, And so I spent a lot more time talking about that and discussing how uh, we can be much more successful as we try to change our behaviors for future benefit. Mm. And with the WALS protocol, someone should anticipate a lot of vegetables. You want to talk about that? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. These radical things known as vegetables. Um, So uh, I I love the paleo diet, but I've taken uh, their recommendations, dialed back the meat Uh, so we don't have so much uh, mammalian targeted rampamycin, and ramped up the vegetables. Uh, So we have, the goal is nine cups of vegetables um, for a guy should be no problem. For a tall lady like me, six foot tall, should be no problem. For a petite person like you, six cups might be uh, more reasonable. (laughs) Um, So there's no need to overeat. But I want that distributed between leafy greens, uh, sulfur containing, so that's... uh, cabbage, onion, mushroom family vegetables, and deeply pigmented, things like carrots, beets, berries. And I've done that for some very specific reasons on the nutritional benefits, which I go into uh, in more detail. Uh, And then I remove foods that are particularly inflammatory, the gluten-containing grains, uh, casein, uh, that is the uh, dairy proteins, and eggs. Um, and then, and I provide a structure for people who are vegetarian or vegan for their spiritual beliefs. And then I provide a structure for meat eaters. Uh, and we up the game with uh, fermented foods and these uh, wonderful superfood known as liver and heart, tremendously good for us. Uh, <laughs> oysters, mussels, shellfish, tremendously good for mm-hmm. us. Um, and then we talk about who might benefit from ketosis. And the many ways you can get yourself into ketosis, it's not just the high-fat diet. 
and I explain how to monitor yourself if you're in ketosis to be sure that you're tolerating it well and that we've selected the proper fat uh, for you. And then who needs to go on the low lectin version of the mm. diet? And what type of fats are included in your diet? I know that you like more pasture raised options if you do eat meat, right? So like Correct. tallow. So my, so my preference uh, is if you're going to cook with the fat, it should be saturated fat. So uh, tallow, lard, duck fat, chicken fat, uh, uh, clarified butter, coconut oil. Um, that's great for cooking. If you're going to use the fat cold, mm -hmm. then olive oil. Mm -hmm. You know, extra virgin olive oil, blend it with some fresh green herbs, make yourself a fresh pesto, drizzle it over everything, lots of it over everything you eat. Fabulously good for you. What about uh, avocado oil? Avocado so, oil is everywhere. So avocado oil, sesame oil, cold is fine. I would not cook with it. Okay. What's really very simple is if it's liquid at room temperature, do not cook with it because you'll damage okay. the oil when you heat it and you'll lose a lot of the goodness in that oil. If it is solid at room temperature, it's okay to cook with. So my preference is, and if you want to avoid saturated fat for your health reasons, then roast, bake, steam, boil, and pour your olive oil herb mixture over it after you've cooked it. That is an awesome tip. I appreciate that. Everybody listening is probably like, yes, we're getting some good food tips at, for at home. And it's funny yes. because when you fly, because you're always traveling to lecture, yes. I always catch you on Instagram eating purple cabbage. Yes. <laughs> and That's other vegetables. So uh, traveling can be fairly toxic. Uh, and so to help my body metabolize the various toxins I'll encounter, I take a head of cabbage with me. And so I slice it and I'll take a big slice that I'll eat en route, another one that I'll eat on the way back. And then I have a few more slices that I can have while I'm at my destination. So I'm maintaining those nine cups of vegetables. Because mm. if I don't get my nine cups of vegetables, I don't have as much energy. I can tell. And so... This just makes traveling so much easier. The other uh, tip that I do is I take a bottle of organ meat capsules with me. Mm, so yeah. I, I have my organ meat along the way. I have my cabbage along the way so I can maintain nutrient density. And then the third tip that I have is I tell my wait staff that if I get gluten, dairy, or eggs, we'll be calling uh, the ambulance. It's uh, unsafe. So I'd like to know, what is safe to eat or should I just have tea while I'm here? Their eyes get big. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. uh, you know, then they'll have the chef come out and ch chat with me. And then we sort out, am I, is there something safe to eat mm -hmm. or am I having tea? And, and because I, I uh, do periodic fast, you know, s skipping a meal, going into a fast, it's not a big deal. Having gluten, dairy, or eggs is a big deal because that turns on my face pain. Uh, to really uh, incapacitating levels uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very important to me to know that my food is clean. And if it's not clean, it's not worth risking having my pain turn on. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just have tea. So what's most interesting to me um, with all of this, as I'm listening to you talk about different conditions that this protocol can help, is that for someone listening to this, because I, I get these questions a lot about, but I have parasoriasis or I have numular eczema or I have like people kind of get stuck in their diagnosis, essentially. Yeah. Would there be what is your thoughts on that when it comes to a protocol like this? Is it like, hey, you know, you have this, but it's OK. This could be helpful if you were to give it a shot for 100 days. What I want your listeners to think about is. Quit focusing on the disease. Start focusing on, I want to create health for my cells. And if I'm going to create health for my cells, that means I need to reduce the oxidative stress, help my mitochondria work well, be sure my cells are flooded with nutrition. And so the Walsh Protocol will do that. And as your cells can do the chemistry of life more properly, typically the dysfunction that led to whatever the underlying disease state is, you, with whatever the skin condition might be, whether it's an autoimmune problem or degenerative problem, will likely begin to calm and self-heal. And I spend a lot of time in, in my clinics at the VA and in my private clinic and in my research is what the most important lesson to learn is you want to focus on creating health. 
And if we, to do that, it's about health behaviors. It is about giving your cells more of what they need to run the chemistry of life and to get rid of your body and out of your lifestyle the types of factors that promote disease. Mm. When you take once once you get that aha, now you begin to realize we're treating many of our disease states the same ways as soon as we begin to focus on creating health. And I and I certainly expect that would be very true of your audience as well, Jen. Get them to focus on creating health for their skin. And that's about food, meditation, sleep, social bonding, finding people who will support you as opposed to tempt you to make unhealthy choices. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I was so excited to talk to you. And I invited you on the show because not just are you pursuing research that shows the efficacy of what you're doing, but you're so entrenched. Like you live this, like it's not just a protocol. You are the living, breathing. Yeah. (laughs) You do that. And, And for all of you listening, I have spent many hours just myself and Dr. Walls talking, and this is literally how she is. And I have such incredible respect for her, and and I was so excited to talk about this new book, which I want to make sure everybody knows the name. It's called The Walls Protocol, A Radical New Way to Treat All Chronic Autoimmune Conditions Using Paleo Principles. I mean, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. And if you look at... Uh, the health and wellness uh, writers out there, I'm really the only one that does any scientific studies mm-hmm. that investigate any of the claims that I make that have validated that the diet actually is nutritionally sound, you can follow it the rest of your life, and you aren't going to create any problems. In fact, you'll dramatically improve the quality of your nutrition. Uh, and that's a really big deal. Mm-hmm. It's huge. It's huge. And I have great respect for that. I mean, I want to do everything that I can to make sure that everyone knows about this new edition and your work. And I am so deeply appreciative to have you here on the show. And, and perhaps one of these times we can have you come back and dive into some other topics because I feel like we only had enough time to kind of scratch the surface at this point. But I just want to thank you so, so much and I want to make sure, too, that everybody can, you've got, like, a bunch of different goodies and things like that. Yes. Your, your um, Instagram is a fantastic way to check you out and to follow you. I love it. And we're going to put all of the links in the show notes for this episode. So it is super easy for everyone to take a look at and access. But if you are thinking, like, what's the one book? If you're just going to buy one book around a diet lifestyle change this year, this would be the book. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Let's change your life. Get your life back on track. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Walls. You're very welcome. I'm so appreciative that Dr. Terry Walls took the time out from her super busy schedule to be here with us and share with us all of this different information. I hope that it will be of help to you. And of course, if you know anybody who has MS or ALS or any other potential condition that this book could drastically impact the quality of their life, please share it with them. All of the resources and links are over in the show notes. You can find them at skinterrupt.com forward slash one, two, four. There you can also leave your comments and questions so we can keep the conversation going. And last but not least, if you haven't done so yet, head on over to your podcast platform of choice, rate, review the show, and then hit the subscribe button. That way the next episode lands on your mobile device. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.